Greetings, friends. Welcome to this worship experience brought to you by Granger United Methodist Church, a hope-filled and faithful congregation here in Medina County. I'm Bruce Hartley. I'm blessed to be the pastor of this congregation. And uh, we pray that you will be blessed by the worship service that we bring to you today, the Sunday following Easter. It looks a little different around the chancel area this week. The flowers that once adorned the chancel last week and the Oh, if you could have just smelled uh, the aroma that came from those, those spring flowers. But those flowers uh, have now found a home uh, in the homes of those who ordered those flowers in honor and in memory of loved ones. So the chancel area looks different following the Easter celebration. But... We are challenged to be living in a different way as Easter people. As a result of Easter, we are challenged to live our lives differently, more hopeful, with greater possibilities for a future that God has made possible. And so as we gather this day in this service, we are here to celebrate the risen Lord's presence, as we continue to affirm the gifts of love and the gifts of hope and the gifts of joy and the gifts of peace, we are here to discover a new meaning for life, to know the power of love, and to celebrate the new life that we have in Christ. During the season of Lent, we offered or shared what we called cross stories. People in the congregation and from beyond the congregation shared stories about crosses, either that they were given or that they purchased or that they have experienced in the course of their life that have enriched their faith. So this week, we include another cross story. This story is going to be shared by the incoming pastor at Granger United Methodist Church. Pastor Wendy Brown uh, will be appointed here at Granger UMC uh, as of July 1st. And so she's been asked to share a story of a cross that has significant meaning to her. Listen as we introduce you to your next pastor. Hi, Granger. My name is Pastor Wendy, and I have been blessed to be called to lead you as a community beginning in July. Um, I'm thankful for Reverend Hartley reaching out to me and letting me know that you're doing these really great videos about crosses that I've been able to view about you and get to know you a little bit more on your website. And I have a cross I was going to share with you today. This is the cross I wanted to share. This cross is a new cross in my collection. I've only had it for about three years. The beauty of this cross is that it was made and given to me by a member of the Lakota tribe in South Dakota. The lady who gave it to me actually is a member of my church at Cornerstone in Elyria right now. I was blessed in 2018 to go out and uh, on a missions trip with the Firelands Youth District and visit with the Lakota and bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ. During the week that I was there, I worked with four young ladies who couldn't afford to pay their fines and had been incarcerated for that. 
And they brought these young ladies out to the mission where we were, and I got to teach them how to sew. This offered them a skill that they learn, um, that they get to continue to earn money for their family so that they don't have any way to stay in poverty. They are able to look themselves up out of the poverty that they were in. And that means so much to me to be in mission with other people. And so I wanted to share that with you today that um, I enjoy the missions trips and I enjoy helping others. And I look forward to serving you and being in mission with you in our new community in Granger. Um, I'm reminded that the Lord calls us to use our gifts given to us by the Holy Spirit that we may go forward in mission to the world to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. That it's not contained just inside the walls of a church building, but that it is in the hearts of the church that we get to carry it out into the world for others, that they may know and love Jesus Christ as well. So I look forward to meeting you and getting to know all of you, and I'll see you in July. Thank you, Pastor Brown, for sharing that story. And we look forward to getting to know you better, to share future introductory video clips with our congregation and with our digital congregation in the months to come. Now, dear friends, let us join our hearts together in a familiar hymn in United Methodism, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. And now, let us hear our scripture focus from the Gospel of John. John 12, Jesus anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived whom Jesus has raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped at his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Thank you, Emily, for sharing the reading of the scripture on this day. We continue our worship experience with the sharing of our prayer concerns. And if you have a concern that weighs heavy on your mind or a joy that you would like to share with the church and with future worship experiences, I encourage you to email that concern or that joy to the church office using the email office at grangerumc.org. Org, and we will include that on our worship uh, pray at home list as well as future worship services. These concerns we bring to you. 
We want to pray for Sebastian Kunkler, who was hospitalized this week. Harold Simmons, Val Ewing, the DeMeza family. Dee Stewart continues her treatments for cancer. Lisa continues her recovery from radiation. David Duke it continues in the process of, of preparing himself uh, emotionally and physically for a kidney transplant we are praying will come about later this year. We pray for Laura Beth Duncan, <clears throat> Doug Patty, Sylvia. We pray for Lily Yost and for Rita Claiborne. We also want to add to our list Corbin Taylor, who is awaiting some further testing for a tumor that has been discovered. The Michael Lawson family, who are uh, who Michael grew up in the in Medina, but he is currently living with his wife and children in Austria, and and I don't need to tell you that's pretty close to what's going on in Ukraine and Poland and, and that region of our world. Carolyn Cernick is beginning treatments for, um, to improve her health. And so we pray for Carolyn. And I ask that you pray for, for two friends of, of the Hartley family. Uh, one is the Wesley Klein family in the recent loss of their adult son very suddenly, and also for Wes and Linda Klein's own personal health. And in addition, we pray for Wayne Rice, a dear friend from a previous congregation who has been discovered to have cancer that's metastasized, and he will begin radiation treatments in the coming days. And as we noted from the cross story, uh, Pastor Wendy Brown, uh, we pray for her as she transitions um, from two congregations that she are, is currently serving uh, to serve Granger United Methodist Church in July. And we pray for this congregation, for Granger United Methodist Church, as they also prepare um, for transition within the pastoral office. Again, if you have concerns that you wish to share and for the people of God to lift in prayer, then surely uh, send those to the office at grangerumc.org. Friends, let us join together in the spirit of prayer. O God of glory, we gather this Sunday following Easter to celebrate, to celebrate your victory over death and your victory over the power of sin in our lives. The empty cross and the promise of the resurrection, why, they are tangible signs of hope in our broken world. We pray this day for our brothers and sisters around the world who aren't free to sing their hallelujahs out loud. We give thanks for those who glorify you this day in places where hope is in short supply, in countries recovering from natural disasters from countries that are being torn by war. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, and who lack the emotional strength to praise you, O oh God. We offer our hallelujahs on their behalf. We pray for their healing so that their voices can be joined with ours in joyful songs of praise. We give you thanks, O oh God, 
for the saints who have gone before us, singing in your heavenly choir. Grateful we are for their lives of faith. Help us, help us, we pray, to live as Easter people, not only on the day we observe, but throughout the year. Let our lives be signs of your unending love and the fresh hope that you bring to us. Lord, we lift to you those persons that we have named previously and that we name now in our hearts. We especially pray for our brothers and sisters who are being affected by, by the warring efforts in Ukraine. For those that have sought refuge in neighboring countries, for those whose lives have been disrupted by the aggression that has come into their country. We pray, O oh Lord, that your spirit would bring peace in this region of the world. We pray all this in the name of the risen Lord, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Easter has happened. The hallelujahs and praise be to God filled this space we call a sanctuary just last week. And now what? Now what do we do? Well, one thing I hope we don't do, and that is to go back to life as usual. I think it's important that as we gather as God's people that we we hear the challenge that comes to us from the scripture that is before us this morning. A story that took place before the resurrection, before the crucifixion, before Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. But it is in looking back through the lens of the resurrection and the crucifixion that we can gain clarity focus on the lives Christ is calling us to live in a post-Easter world. And to that end, I am, I am led to, to offer this God, God talk of, of, of living a life that really matters. And to live a life that really matters, in, in, in my understanding of the scripture that is before us this day, it is to live with hospitality, with a, a spirit of hospitality. I want to tell you a couple of stories, one of which is a story of two strangers who attended the same church for several Sundays in a row. Now, it wouldn't happen here at Granger United Methodist Church, but it, it might be the experience that you have had. These two strangers who attended these worship services, the same church, not one person spoke to either one of them 
one lady became entirely distressed by that experience. It had never happened to her before that she had visited a congregation and no one spoke to her. So she decided, I'll give this church one more chance, one more. If nobody speaks to me next Sunday, I'll never go back. The other lady, well, she said, I don't like this, this no speak situation in this church. If no one speaks to me next Sunday, I'll break the ice and I'll speak to someone myself. Well, the next Sunday came and the Sunday ushers, the ushers for the worship service happened to seat these two strangers in the same pew. Once more, nobody spoke. Not even the ushers who handed them their bulletins, their worship folders for that service. Just kind of led them to a pew, nodded that this is where they would be seating, sitting, and, and, and then went on their way. Well, once more, nobody spoke to either woman. But as the first woman rose to stalk out of the sanctuary for what she had declared would be forever, the second woman turned, put out her hand, and said, Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to see you. And with this simple, simple resolve, a friendship developed, and they both continued to attend that church. The elation of the resurrection, it did not last long in the first century. <laughs> Once Peter and the other disciple that we hear about in the Gospels, and then later Mary, once they returned from the empty tomb, they locked themselves behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. But the doors could not keep Christ out of their lives, and he enters the room and their lives. Jesus says, peace be with you. And this greeting was, was met with joy on the part of the disciples and a challenge that came out of the mouth of Christ. He said, I'm sending you. Jesus called the disciples to move beyond the doors and to share a life that, that really matters. And that challenge is what I'm reminding us of today, this Sunday following Easter. The challenge must be heard again today by Easter people, by, by you and me. So throughout the next several weeks, we're going to be focusing on the call to be a witness to the resurrection, a call to be a witness to the risen Lord as we explore the acts of the, the, um, the apostles. But today we're returning to um, a pre-Easter encounter of Jesus, a story that sheds light, as I've alluded to already, on our post-Easter behavior. And here's the point. I'm not going to make you wait to the very end to, to get the point. This is the point I'm going to do my best to get across to you. The point is living a life that really matters means we practice hospitality. Easter people practice hospitality, not just at Easter, but every day. 
Now, the attitude of hospitality is evident in the gospel lesson that is before us today. Jesus is a guest of Mary and Martha and Lazarus at a dinner that has been given in his honor. Now, you may recall Jesus had restored Lazarus to life, and the family was eternally grateful, and each family member had a role to play in that gathering. Martha prepared the meal. Lazarus, we understand, entertained the guest of honor. Mary took the family inheritance of of perfume reserved for special occasions. And she poured the whole bottle onto Jesus' feet. And then, kneeling down, she wipes his feet with her hair. I'm suggesting that it is in the spirit of hospitality Mary acts with a grateful heart. But immediately she confronts restrictive attitudes that were present in that room. Yeah, there was Judas. Judas is is the first one to expose such an an attitude that, that restricts hospitality. He criticizes the act as as going too far. He tries to hide behind a concern for the poor, but but Jesus, Jesus sees through his this his facade and and he reveals his self-centeredness that before long has him stealing from the treasury. Hospitality. Hospitality is not always understood and more often not met with a, more often it, it seems to be met with a, 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 a what on earth are you thinking kind of response. But to live a life that really matters, we must continue to practice hospitality, to transform the world around us, a task that God has given us as people of the risen Lord, we must practice hospitality to strangers and to friends. So we see, we see through the scripture that what hospitality looks like. It is extravagant. It is spontaneous, and I'm suggesting that it is without boundaries. But before we try to rationalize, hospitality is more than than a tea party with friends, a a suite at at a business convention, or even greeters at church doors. Hospitality, I, I, I propose, is a, is a spiritual discipline and a moral obligation of all who call themselves followers of Christ. As Easter people, we are called to practice hospitality to one another and to do so without grumbling and without seeking accolades or a pat on the back for doing what Christ has called us to do. There's a story told of Thomas Jefferson. While he was president in the early days of our country, one day Jefferson and his entourage came to a river on horseback. Standing on the bank was a man not known to anybody in this entourage. He was just standing there. And this man, this stranger, approached Thomas Jefferson and asked for a ride across the river. Jefferson gave him a lift up onto the horse, and they crossed safely to the other side of the river. And once there, several assistants 
they criticized the man for asking the president for a ride across the river. <laughs> to which the man replied, Look, I didn't know he was the president of the United States. I just know some people have a yes on their face and some people have a no on their face. And the president's face said, yes. So I ask him for a ride. I wonder what your face says to other people. Yes or no? What would a, a yes face look like in your perception? And what would a no face look like in your perception? From our neighbors to the parking lot to the pews, the risen Christ is calling us to be a people with a yes on our faces so that we welcome strangers into our midst. Hospitality. Oh, hospitality may be an attitude, but it is made real through actions. Hospitality doesn't have to be organized. It doesn't have to be programmed. It doesn't have to be formatted or dissected. Hospitality is expressed in, in random acts of kindness and spontaneous and extravagant to friends as well, and if not more, to strangers who are new to these surroundings where we may find ourselves. The most, the most heart-stirring, toe-tapping music, the greatest preaching will not overcome a lack of hospitality. My observation over the years is that it is not that the church folk are in and of themselves unfriendly. They're very nice people. But rather, too many, too many folks in the church, well, let me just say it. Too many folks in the church think that hospitality is someone else's job. It's the usher's job. It's the greeter's job. It's the pastor's job. Really? Really? It's somebody else's job to be taken care of by people with titles, by people with, with training, by people who are on a specific committee or team in a church. Uh, no, no, friends, it's not left up to someone else to do that. As we put hospitality into action to live a life that really matters, we must avoid falling into the mindset that, that we get to decide who will receive our welcome and who will not receive our welcome. That is selective hospitality. You see, as Easter people, we must show all persons that Jesus is the way. Jesus did not give us the, the option of deciding whom we will welcome and whom we choose to ignore. Hospitality, it breaks down walls of prejudice that leads us to, to view others as inferior and different and dangerous, even unworthy of our time and attention. It is the mission of the church to bring people together who do not know one another. 
So what attitudes, what attitudes, I wonder, would have to change in order for us to completely embrace one another? Attitudes, you see, attitudes control our actions. What actions might we take? What actions might we take? What if we greet someone in the parking lot? Or on the way to a worship space? Regardless if they spoke first. Hmm. What if we shared a bulletin with someone who may have missed them on the way into the sanctuary? As a parent, as, you, as we might see a parent who is juggling a, a couple of kids and you know all the baggage that goes along with that, diaper bags and, and, and little, little packets of activities for the kids to do if they're coming to worship for the first time, not knowing what their children are, might expect. What if, we, what if as a parent you, who is juggling all of this, if we lent them a helping hand or at least offered a helping hand? What if we offer to show a family where the nursery is, even if, you, even if you haven't used it for years and years and years? What if someone has a perplexed look on their face and they ask you, and you ask them, I should say, how you could help them? You know, you've, you've been in a, in a Walmart or a Target or a, a Drug Mart or something like that, and, and you're kind of scanning, and, and don't you feel good when, when one of the clerks says, is there anything I can help you with? I was at a store just the other day, and, and I thought I know what I was looking for, but I didn't realize there were so many varieties of teriyaki sauce. And the young man who was stalking the other side of the aisle said, is there something I can help you find? See, that's the kind of, it was, it was, maybe he was trained to do that. But it certainly gave me a warm feeling to know. And I'd probably frequent that store again. How would that, how would that follow over into, into the church? Hospitality is an atmosphere reflected by our actions and, and no one can create, create it in a community of faith except for you. You can create that within the community of faith, whether it's Granger United Methodist Church or if you're a part of another congregation and just happen to be worshiping with us via this service online, what if it's up to you to extend that hospitality? I'm asking us to move beyond the doors that we might feel nice and safe and secure behind. And I'm, I'm challenging all of us who, who claim to be followers of the risen Christ to live a life that really matters and to create an atmosphere, not only within our churches, but within our neighborhoods, maybe within our workplace, an atmosphere of hospitality. I challenge all of us to live with a yes on our face and not a no. Dear friends, we will pick up this thought of what it means to live as Easter people in the coming weeks 
As we hear the challenge in the upcoming worship uh, sermon series, as we hear the challenge, you will be my witnesses. And I hope you will be a witness to the risen Christ. Peace be with you. Amen. And now let us continue to worship in a beautiful, beautiful hymn from our United Methodist hymnal, Lord, you have come to the lake shore. If you know it, join along. Otherwise, meditate on the words as I believe they express hospitality in a new way. So God loves us and so and God gives and we love God and so we give. As we respond to God's love, I assure you that the your offering last week empowered ministry within our congregation and also responded to the needs of our community. Many of you contributed to the uh, change for change, the UMCOR offering that we offer, uh, encouraged during the season of Lent, UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief. It supports relief efforts near and far. Your change in those jars will always be accepted and added to the growing amount. We're continuing uh, in the last couple weeks, and we'll do so through the end of May in a macaroni and cheese collection that will support feeding Medina County. And so if you see a deal somewhere when you're out shopping over the next couple weeks, buy up some extra boxes of macaroni and cheese and bring them to the church in April and in May. It is through ministries like this 
they all happen and benefit others. Thanks to people like you, the people of the United Methodist Church, the people who are followers of Christ as we live and we give generously. I invite you to give generously as we worship God through the sharing of our gifts and our tithes and our offerings. You can send your financial contributions to the church or go online and follow those directions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. And we praise God from whom all blessings flow. So, we have gathered to hear God's word. We have connected with God through the scripture and through the hymns. We have connected with one another through the prayer concerns. And now we go out into the world. We go out into the world to serve with a yes on our face. And as we go forth, O children of God, as May we go forth as people who are forgiven and who have much love to share. To share with those who have yet to sense the forgiveness God extends to them. Who have yet to experience the depth of God's love. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and rest upon you and all those whom you love. Amen. Go in peace and may God watch over us until we meet again. Announcements for April 24th, 2022. Please contribute to our macaroni and cheese food drive throughout all of April and May. Drop your donations off at our basket during Sunday service or during office hours. This will benefit Feeding Medina County. Auditions will be held April 26th and 27th for a play to be performed fri Friday, June 26th at Highlands High School as part of the Bicentennial Celebration. More information is on signupgenius.com. Wondering how you can help the people of Ukraine? Gifts to support the people of, your, of Ukraine can be made in the following ways. Online at umcmissions.org. Toll-free telephone 888-252-6174. By check with the note ADVANCE 982450-Ukraine written on the memo line and mailed an address to the Global Ministries or through any, and you can be mailed that to any United Methodist Church. 100% of all advanced contributions go to the designated cause. There is a Swiss Steak Dinner drive through Saturday, April 30th, 4.30 to 6.30. Suggested donation is $13. Pre-orders, call Chris to reserve 216-346-0204 at Remsen Christian Church, 1500 Remsen Road, Medina.